Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we praise your name. O oh Lord, we worship, we glorify you. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the salvation of our souls. We thank you for bringing us before you this morning. Righteous Father, we look up unto heaven, we ask that the have your way in the life of each and every one of us. For you have created us for thy pleasure. And for thy pleasure we are where we are created. Our oh, praying this day take pleasure in us. Father, work on us and perfect us and use us as instruments to bring glory to your name in Jesus' name. All I'm asking you, as many who are here today and all over the world that are following us in this ministration, Father, transform our lives. Make us holy, habitable house unto thee. Make us Christ-like in love, in righteousness, in fear of God. Make us Christ-like in every area of our lives. Father, make us holy and qualify us for heaven at last in Jesus' name. I cover here with the blood of Jesus. Father, I take authority in heaven and I bind the devil. I bind the fallen angels. I bind all the human agent to the devil, I bind their power. I paralyze them, I cast them to abyss in Jesus' name. I lose your power. Your power to save, your power to deliver. Your power to teach, your power to understand. Your power to obey, your power to apply everything that which I be taught. Father, let that power come upon us in Jesus' name. I decree. That no one that step into this place shall go back the same. Bless everyone. Holy Ghost take over. In Jesus' powerful name we pray. Shall we get seated? Turn your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 23, chapter 9, and from verse 23. Jeremiah, chapter 9, from verse 23. Thus says the Lord, Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. But let him that glorieth glory in this. That he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which excites loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For these things I delight, says the Lord. In Galatians chapter 5, Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 19. 
Philippians chapter 3, reading verse 19. Whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and who glory in their shame, who mind earthly things. From this chapter and verses, I'm bringing to you the topic this morning. I'm talking to you on the topic. What is your glory? What is your glory? Many believers, many people in the present days are carried away with the rat race, rat race of the people of the world. They are copying the world, and as a result, they are mindful of the things of this world, believers. They are mindful of the things of this world. I want to take notes. They are pursuing the things of this world as if those things have internal value. As if though we are going to use these things forever. Or we are going to take these things, whatever we have here, we are going to use them when we have dropped our body. When we have left this world, we are going to stay, you know, enjoy most of the things that we see here. But there's something I want to let you know that is not what we can see with our eyes that shall follow us out of this world, even our body. We can never cross over this life with our body. But many people are after the things that they see. The things that appear to the body, to the flesh. They are pursuing those things as if though when you are leaving this world, you will carry them. And the most unfortunate thing is that believers who are born again, who knows the truth, are being deceived. They are copying the world. Are you among them? Many are following the world and worldly people who are carnal, worldly people that are not spiritual, that are not born again, that doesn't know the value of their soul. But doesn't know that these things has no real meaning as long as heaven is concerned. As long as the next life is concerned, many believers are pursuing these things, copying the people of the world who are blind to spiritual things who are blind towards heaven and are heading to hellfire. Of course, you should know that if an unbeliever dies, as long as he's not born again, he can never enter the kingdom of God. So, that's why they are pursuing the things of this world blindly. And then, end up in mortgaging their life in exchange of the things of this world. Because they do not know the value of their soul. And what that happens is that they'll end up in hair fire. Also, out of their blindness, unbelievers' blindness, sinners, they are glorying on the earthly things. 
and the vanities of this life. As if they can carry them out on the last day. Many people, unbelievers, are thinking that all these things they are pursuing after, they are going to carry them out when they are dying. That is their thought. Because they lack knowledge, they are blind. Because they do not know what happens after. They are deceived. But there's something I want to let you know according to the Bible concerning the things of this world. In Ecclesiastes chapter Ecclesiastes chapter one verse two. Let's open our Bible and read. Ecclesiastes chapter I'm reading chapter one and verse two. Vanity of vanity says the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All is everything about this life is what? Vanity. They are nothing. So, believers are now glorying on these things, on vanities things that are vanities and are deceived. As a result, many believers have become vain, empty because of following after vanity. In 2 Kings chapter 17 verse 15, many have become empty. Many do not have any content in their soul anymore. In chapter 17, verse 15, and they rejected his status and his covenant that he made with their fathers and his testimonies, which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the hidden that were round about them. These were people of God of old, the Israelites of old. They left the commandment given to them. They left following the, the will of God and they were looking at the people of the world, the heathen, and they began to copy them, and the Bible says they became vain. They began to pursue vanity, and they became empty. And that's exactly what is happening in the present day. Many people are becoming empty because they're copying the world. Are you like that? Something must be done. So, the point now is this. What is your glory? Your title? What is your glory? Your money? What is your glory? What is it that you are glory of? The things of this life. You need to shake. Are you deceived like the people of old? Take note of this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 31. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 31. I read chapter 7 verse 31. 
And they that use this word as not abusing it for the fashion of this world passes away. The glory of this world does what? Passes away. None of them abide forever. They shall vanish away. I want to ask you this question. The people that were in Nigeria in 1950 or 1960 that were young and beautiful women and young and handsome men, are they still like that today? Please answer me. Those men that her title are uh, honorable. Are they still returning those things today? Those men that had a lot of things of this world, that had a wonderful car in 1960, are they still returning them today? Those cars, are people still riding those cars today? Please answer me. All those glory has faded away. What happened to those glory? They have faded. In fact, those honorable and mighty men and uh, kings, in fact, in the most recent time, if you take your mind to 1970, 75, 1980, 85, and then you discover there are some men that people are, uh, you can't say, they can't talk about honor, title, to riches without mentioning their name. Today, many of them have gone. Their glory has faded away. In fact, there are some songs that were beaten that time. Uh, those songs were traditional songs. They mentioned their names, all of them in the part of the eastern Nigeria. They're calling their name. When they call this man, they call his title, the king. And the how is so great. They, they have clubs. But then many of them have gone. And their glory has faded away. And therefore, I want to let you know the things of this world passes away. Let nobody be deceived by the things of this world. Are you hearing me? Don't let anything deceive you. If you look at the Bible in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. It is certain. If those men were not born again and not saved, they have lost everything. They have lost their soul, they have lost their title, they have lost their money, they have lost their wealth, they have lost everything. Remember, there is nothing you have that can take out of this world. Any day you drop your body. Only your soul will stand before God. And if you did not repent, that poor soul will be cast into hell or suffer forever. And then the things you have gotten in this world have subsisted in deceiving you and making you to lose your soul. I want you to sit up and go for what matters. We should glory in our salvation. If there is something we should glory, we should glory that we are what? Saved. That should give us a lot of joy that your soul is saved. That if you leave this world today, you are going to heaven. That is something to glory about. We 
to glory that we are living our life in Christ. We are living righteous life, not our own righteousness, but we are living righteous life by our faith in Christ and by the, our acceptance of Jesus Christ that today we are living righteous life through the foundation that have been laid in our hearts by Jesus Christ. So we should glory that we have assurance of salvation. We should glory that our names are in the book of life. We should glory that we, are, we have assurance of making heaven at last. That is what glory, not on the things that are deceivers. In fact, everything about this world is what? What all this one can see with their eyes is what? They are all deceivers. So, in this message, we are going to consider the flowing subheadings. One, the reason and the counsel. The reason and counsel. Two, warning and the danger. Let's go to point number one. The reason and reasons and counsel. Every true child of God must know that we are delivered from the vanities of this life to serve the living God. We are delivered from all these things to serve God. And I call it vanities of this life. Acts chapter 14 verse 15 says Acts of Apostles chapter 14 verse 15 And saying says Why do you this these things. Why do ye these things? We also are men of like patterns with you and preach unto you that you should turn from these vanities unto the living God, which made heaven and earth and the sea and all things that are therein. So turn from what? From this vanity. So, we should understand we are delivered from this vanity to serve the living God. In Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Mark chapter 10, verse 28. Chapter 10, verse 28. Then Peter began to say unto him, Look, we have left all and followed thee. We left how many things? We have left all and followed thee. So, our encounter with Christ made us to turn our back from the world, turn our back from all the people of the world are pursuing because we know the end of those things. That those things are vanities. And so the apostles say, We have left all and followed thee. So when, when we were converted, we were converted from these things to serve the living God. And therefore, the dog must never go back to eat vomit. Are you hearing me? Let not what we rejected becomes what we are going after because of the present distress, because of the, the condition of the world. The world will continue to deteriorate until the rapture takes place. Praise the Lord. 
So everyone must know what matters now and what we should place high value on. Certainly not on these vanities. What matters now is not the vanities of this life. What matters now is our soul. Where will we spend eternity? What matters now is where are you going to live forever? And if that be the case, you must place high value on your soul and ensure that you do everything to make sure that this soul is saved. Take note. I want you to take note what the Bible made us to understand. The things of this world, we must surely abandon them here on earth. And so, the Bible says in Mark chapter 8, verse 36, Mark chapter 8, verse 36, What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? Anything? Is there anything you can give in exchange of your soul? The whole world, every, all the way, the riches, everything in this world cannot buy a single soul. So, there is nothing you can give in exchange of your soul. Many believers are glorying in their wealth. They are glorying in their money. They are glorying in their properties. They are glorying in their cars. They are glorying in their, in their houses or, and children. They glory in the vanities of this life. Many glory and their children, their husband, their wife, and are now glorying on earthly things which have no internal value. I will show you the danger of such things. Praise the Lord. Remember, the fashion of this world passes away. I want you to take note. Nobody will take money out of this world. Nobody will take property out of this world. Cars, houses, children, husband, wife. You can't carry any of them out of this world. You are going to go alone to meet God. You are going to stand before him alone. And if you have mortgage your soul you will miss all you, after missing all these things losing all these things you will still lose your soul I pray it shall never be our portion in Jesus name pray that through this message everybody must begin to see the need to ensure that your soul is saved Ensure that after this, our sojourn in this wicked world, suffering in this world, that we will enter into glory to rejoice and to be with God forever and ever. Don't forget, the things of this world, the Bible says, vanity of vanity, all is what? Vanity. The things of the, this world is vanity. So, these things make those giving to it to lose everything. Those that are pursuing the things of this world, they will lose everything. So, our counsel is that we should learn how to place value on heavenly things.
things which matters in eternity, we shall begin to place value on those things. Remember, First Timothy chapter six verse seven says, "For we brought nothing to this world, and it is something we can carry nothing out." If you look at Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen. We can carry nothing out, nothing. Take note of that. Second Corinthians chapter four verse eighteen. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are internal. The Bible says we should, we should look at the things which are seen. We shouldn't run after those things, things that are seen, because they are what? Temporal. Those things will decay. Those things will wash old. Those things will vanish. They will fade away. So, take note the things that are seen. Whatever we can see now, we don't need to place value or pursue after those things and forget these souls we are carrying. Let us understand that all the things of this world are what? Temporal things. And they will fade away. But the things we do not see are what? Internal. So we should glory that we are saved. My brothers and sisters, it is a great thing for you to be saved because that is the greatest thing you can get in this world which will follow you forever and ever. We should glory that we maintain holiness. That we are living the life of purity. That is the thing that will you heaven at last. That we are sanctified. We should, we should provoke others by testimony of our salvation, sanctification, testimony of righteousness, of holiness, and we are happy that we look at our lives, we say that nothing is standing between us and God. We are sure that if anything happens, that we shall make heaven at last. This is the thing that we need to glory about. So, we should glory that we are baptized in the Holy Ghost. We should glory that we have all the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of the Spirit. These things are not seen. They are internal. The fruit of the Spirit. I want to take note of that. The fruit of love, fruit of spirit of God, of love, of righteousness, of mercy, of meekness, of truth, of faithfulness, of community, patience. These things are internal. You don't see them, but they are the things that matter a lot when we cross over. Praise the Lord. So we should glory in these things. We should glory that we know God and are his true children. We should glory that we are doing exploits in his kingdom. That means we are winning souls, provoking people to repentance, doing the will of God. We should glory in these things. 
that we are growing in faith in grace that we are winning many souls into the kingdom we are abiding his will that is the thing that makes us to glory testify talk about and share among ourselves how that you are winning souls how you are living the life that pleases God how you are living righteous life how you have hope of making heaven how that you have amended your ways you are not institution you have made peace with men and peace with God and nothing is standing between you and God anymore we should glory in those things that is the counsel let us run away from glory in the things that is vanity things that will fade away position and power and title and money and the house or cars these things has no internal value we should glory that we are pleasing God we are doing the will of God from the heart brethren when you are glory like this all, God Almighty will use you to provoke others to repentance praise the Lord he will use you to pro, pro, provoke other stimulation. Stimulate you. They want to live holily as you are. They will want to live humbly as you are. They will want to live, you know, in love as you are. They want to live, you know, in fear of God as you are living. When they see it in you, and that is the thing that gives you joy. Those watching you want to do the same thing. Praise the Lord. Now you are rejoicing and praising God and testify of your salvation and the people that are around you are seeing the joy that you are expressing by testifying of your salvation. People want to be saved like you because they can see that you glory in this thing, that this thing, this thing that are glory in it must have a lot of value. That's why you are testifying and talking about it. So, let all of us learn how to glory that we know God and we are doing the will of God from our heart. That takes me to point number two. Warning and the danger. Everyone should glory that we know God and He is our Father and glory that we are pleasing God. And doing the will of God as we have been told. We should glory that we know Him as we have been commanded in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 23 and 24. We should not glory on earthly possession and thereby provoke others to covetousness and sin. Listen to me. If you, as a child of God, is talking about your money, talking about your car, talking about your building, talking about, you know, your title, you will provoke others to look for the same thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you are, what you are rejoicing and glory about is about your money, your title, your property. Those who doesn't have it, they want to go and steal. They want to go back to the world. They want to go and do many things so they can get money as you are, as you are, as you have got money. Uh, they want to buy a car, build a house as you have bought a house, and thereby leading them into covetousness to sin and to stealing and then preparing them to leave the church and go back to the world and go to hellfire. I don't know whether you are following the point I'm making. That you are glory that you build a house, you have money, you have children, and your children in school, your children have, have, have done this exploit, you have done this exploit, 
and you are, you know, and people you are talking to are listening. After you finish talking to them, they want to do like you. I don't know whether you are afraid of what I'm making. If you are, if you are glory that you bought a car, they pray that that car has a lot of meaning. And they even be thinking that you know, when you, you drive car here, when you die, you still, you know, cross over with your car. Many people want to buy a car. Many people want to build a house. And by so doing, some will become thief in the house of God. Some will begin to do fraud in the house of God. And who caused it? You are the one that provoked them because of what they are glorying that has no glory in it. Praise the Lord. So, we must, as children of God, if we have these things, we must do something. I'm going to show you what we are going to do. Praise the Lord. So, let us not allow the things of this world to become something that is so magnified, glorified, that the members of the church and unbelievers will begin to run after them. If that happens, it is just like turning them back to Egypt and sending them to destruction. So, we should be cautious of provoking people to covetousness, provoking them to sin, and provo provoking them to backsliding. We must glory in doing exploit to the glory of God. We must never give the flesh chance anymore or to dominate us again or to cause us to sin against God. Remember that the flesh cannot enter heaven. The Bible says, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So, the, as the number one enemy you have is your flesh. You want to, you want to enjoy the world and deceive your soul and take the soul to hellfire. So, let us be careful not allow our flesh to deceive our souls and to make us to miss heaven at last. God forbid. The soul is fighting with, the flesh is fighting with your soul, your spirit every day. And it doesn't want you to be saved. They want to live comfortable. They want to enjoy the world. And he wants to have praises. We must not allow the flesh to dominate us anymore at all, at all. Is it clear on what I'm saying? I say we must not do what? Allow the flesh to dominate us. If you do that, it might lead you back to destruction. I pray it shall never be your portion. Do you hear me? It shall never be our portion. That from church, you begin to go into covetousness, into stealing, into lying, into compromise, because some people have made you to do so, because they are rejoicing and glory in earthly things. We must not allow that at all, at all. So, take note. Whenever anyone is glory that he is making it in this world, or glory of man or things in this world, such a person will be provoking others to backslide, to covetousness, as I've told you, which will constitute danger and destruction to their faith and make them to go to hell fire at the end. You do hear what I'm saying? So, if you look at Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, Second Timothy. He said, For Demas had forsaken me, having loved this present world. He has forsaken 
the apostles and turned back to the world. Now, he has forgotten about the gospel. He has gone back to the world. So, something made him to do that. They might see people who are, you know, advertising the things of the world. And he left the church and then turned away from the apostle and went back. We must not allow that at all, at all. For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world. In John chapter 21, let's see. John chapter 21. John 21. I read verse, from verse 1. 21 and from verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee and two other of the disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. And they went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Take note of that point. This is how corruption, this is how as leading starts. One of the apostles. Why the Lord told them, wait for me. I am going to meet with you after my resurrection. And they waited a little. And one of them said, I go a fishing. I want to go and go back to my business, go and do fishing business, which was what he was doing before the Lord called him. And then, all the apostles said, we are going with you. And they left each of winning souls waiting for Jesus. They went into what? Fishing. The question is this, did they succeed? The Bible said they caught nothing. That is how believers who will abandon faith and go to look for money will end up in getting nothing. So, the Peter corrupted them, all of them followed him to what? To fishing. Until the Lord appeared there and recovered them. You also know the case of uh, Jonah. Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and preach. Jonah abandoned preaching and ran to Tarshish, where there is business. And the Lord caught him and stopped his journey and made him to be thrown into the sea and swallowed by shark until the Lord dealt with him and the shark vomited him out. I want to let you know as many who are after the things of this world when they are born again or deceived they end up in losing everything including their life I pray it shall never be your portion. Praise the Lord. My prayer is that forward ever and backward never. My prayer is that what will give you joy, what will glory now is how many souls you have won and you are winning for the Lord. The righteous life you are living now, doing the will of God from your heart. That is what is giving you joy. And that's what you're advertising and talking about. It's not how much exploit you are doing in your business, how many buildings you are building, how many children you have, the title you have. Those things have no anything to add to your soul. Any day you drop your body, those things will 
forget about them forever. And if they have deceived you, a person will go to hell. I want you to shake your life. Peter took the apostles away. Thank God the Lord appeared and recovered them. So, these things of the world, we make them to turn back to pursue money. The, that is, when you are glorying about them, it will make the people to go back and begin to look for those things, look for money, and thereby lose everything, and they will be cast into hellfire at the end. Don't forget, vanity of vanity, all is what? Vanity. So we must not allow those things, the vanity of this life, to take you to hellfire. Look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. Matthew chapter 7, verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who should build his house upon the rock. He said, We speak to them, depart from me on the day, on the last day. When the person will go to meet the Lord, they depart from me, ye that walk iniquity. I never know you. The title is lost. No, no, anything like uh, pleasure, suffering, fire, burning from eternity to eternity. Nothing like fire or air condition. Nothing like. The worm that eat there can never die from eternity to eternity. In fact, hellfire is a horrible place. Instead of one going to hellfire, let that person not have anything at all, at all. Listen to me. Do you know? Do you know? Your days in this world could be 120 years. That's maybe the much you can live, 140 years. It will finish. But eternity cannot finish. As we, you suffer for 140 years and drop your body and then enter glory and enjoy it forever. It's better than you enjoy 140 years and then cross over and suffer from eternity to eternity. God forbid. So, wisdom is profitable for warfare. Wisdom is good. But because by it, a house is built. By it, you make war. Wisdom will help you to understand that the things of this world, they are deceivers. They are vanities. So, we need to handle them with a light hand. Did you hear me? In First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19, let's read. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 19. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. He said, we are of all men, what? Most miserable. We are of all men, most miserable. If in this life only you have hope in Christ for healing, for deliverance, for prosperity, you have hope in Christ for, you know, for comfort, that is your salvation. That is your glory. He said, you have all men most miserable. We should have hope in Christ beyond this earth and earthly glory. Hope, have hope in Christ of making heaven at last. My friend, what matters now is heaven. Praise the Lord. I say, what matters now is what? We have come into the world. 
and the next thing is going out of the world. The question now is where will you go? Heaven or hellfire? We have come. The next thing is, you are not entering your mother's womb again. All of us that are here now, what I wait for us is going out. Now, where will you go? To heaven or to hell fire? Now, I choose heaven for you. Do you hear me? I choose it for you. I have chosen, I made that choice. I made the choice to go to heaven. So, I know it's a good choice. So, I choose it for you. All the people watching me all over the world, I say, I'm making a choice of heaven for you. Because it is the greatest. So don't let anything deceive you. If you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 29, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, remember, very shortly I'll round up and pray for you very shortly. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 29. Let's see. Verse 29. For this I say, brethren, the time is short. It many that both they that have wives be as though as though they had not. Those that have wives do what? Please answer me. Those that have wives, the time remains for you to do what? The time that remains, remains for you to do what? Be as though you don't have wife. I'm not hearing you again. Are you following what my teaching? Don't let anything distract you because I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. What you hear will determine the kind of prayer you are going to make. Now, if you look at that place, eh, the time is what? Now, let me ask you this question. All of us that are here now, many of us are 20 years, 30 years. Many of us are 40 years and 50 years. Am I right? Many of us are 60 years. Now, but let me ask you this question. I give you the next 60 years. Will you be here? Okay, let's assume you are going to be here 120 years. Okay, I add to you 100 years. I say, I am adding how many years? 100 years to everybody here. Everybody, 100 years. Will you be here? <laughs> if you are here, people will, your children, they, they will see you as a liability. In fact, they will avoid you. Some will say that you have some evil spirit that made you continue to live like this. They want to throw you away. Some of them will even pray that you die. Praise the Lord. But all I'm assuring you, my friends, the time is short. There is no more time. Christ is coming very shortly to take the sense away. And so, what matters is how do you live your life so that Christ will take you away when he comes. Or whenever we drop our body, we're going to meet with him and live with him forever and ever. Can I hear you say amen? amen. Remember, in this church, God will protect you. God will give you a long life. You will not die young, but where will you be at the end of your life? Can I hear you say, heaven at last? <laughs> where will you be at the end of this life? That is what I'm praying for you. Heaven at last. And if you're on the road to heaven now, I congratulate you. Yes, because you're on the right road. Amen. Look at that place we're reading, chapter 7, verse 8, uh, 29 again. I read it and we get to chapter 7. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remains that both they that have wives as though they, they have not. 
and they that weep as though they wept not and they that rejoice as though they rejoice not and they that buy as though they possess not and they that use this word as not abusing it for the fashion of this world passes away he said whatever you have be as though you don't have them that is the kind of life you are living so that those things will not hinder you from making heaven you have you have money you have education you have property let it not let it not be cloud your mind let it not constitute weight and distract you from serving God do as you do you don't have them is it clear what I'm saying so that you can serve God with free mind because those things will surely pass away praise the Lord now look at 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 as unknown yet well known as the As dying, as dying, yet we live. Look at it. Behold, we live as chastened and not key, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. That's the like kind of life we're living now. People will see you as having nothing. Not that you don't have something. Praise the Lord. But it was done because of your relationship with God and what you know about those things. So you behave as if though you don't have death. Praise the Lord. That's what the Lord expects from you. Let not what you have enter your head. For those things are nothing. They are vanities. Is it clear on what I'm saying? Those things are what? Nothing. I want to take note of that because it matters a lot. Remember the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 21 it says, Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. Everything is, belongs to us. As long as we are children of God, all things belong to us. Now, what you should know is, though all things belong to us, we do as if though we don't have them, so that nothing can hinder us from serving God and hinder us from giving glory to God. Praise the Lord. So, you need to search your life as I'll be rounding up now. What is your glory? The things of this world, your title, your money, your position. What is your glory? Your children, your husband, your wife. The things of this world. Detach your mind from that. If that is your glory, it will hinder you from giving glory to God and it will hinder you from making heaven at last. Let God be your glory. Let the salvation of your soul be your glory. Let righteousness be your glory. For the things that are seen are temporal. For the things that are not seen are eternal. Let us go for these things that are not seen and glory in them provoke others' stimulation so that others will be saved. 
and make heaven at last. But if you go on to glory in non essential, in vanity, you become vain, and will, you will not make it, and others watching you also will be completely led astray. They will be destroyed. I pray it shall never be our portion in Jesus' name. So, as I round up now, we need to search our lives. Everybody, search your life. I want to remind you, a Christian is not a sinner. A sinner is not a Christian. The Bible makes us understand in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in Romans chapter 6, I read verse 1. He says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. We must not continue in sin because in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, let's see. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4. Remember, I am concluding now. Ezekiel 18, verse 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth shall die. The soul that sinneth shall do what? Die. Any person that continues in sin will be cut off from God. Because it will die spiritual death. And if you continue, it will die physical death and go to hell. Because sin is not of God. The origin of sin, look at this place. In 1 John chapter 8, chapter 3, verse 8, rather. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. I read, He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that they might destroy the works of the devil. You can now see, He that committed sin is of the devil. It belongs to who? To the devil. That's why the Bible must understand the soul that sinned shall die. But if you look at verse 9, it says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for he still remains to him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. So verse 8 says, A sinner is not a Christian. And verse 9 says, A Christian is not a sinner. Then what is sin? Look at First John chapter 5 verse 17 here. It says all unrighteousness is sin. Anything that is not righteousness is what? Sin. So you need to search your life. I want to remind you unbelief is sin. Unforgiveness is sin. Selfishness is sin. Disobedience is sin. Anger lying, pride. All these things are terrible sins. You need to search your life, strife, contention, bitterness, keeping malice, bearing grudge, lusting after a birthday, covetousness, love of money, love of the world, pride of life. All these are terrible sins. Envy is a terrible sin. Hatred. You need to search your life. All unrighteousness is sin. I don't know the one you are into. Backbiting, speaking evil of other people, is a terrible sin. Blasphemy is sin. Causing people. Murmuring, swearing with heaven and earth, is a terrible sin. Worshiping idol, making an idol, having an idol in your heart, is sin. Or going to native doctors to make sham for any remedy, for divination. That is sin. And if they are giving you anything, please repent and promise, reject those things and gather them and burn them. And if you are a native doctor, please renounce that evil. Gather all your property that you are using to practice that evil. Set them ablaze. 
because that is a terrible sin for you to have anything to do with native doctors. Or to practice that evil. Now listen to me. All those that belong to secret court, open court, marine court, witchcraft court, local court, international court, campus court, anything called this in his world, sin. And if you are told this, confess them, renounce them, gather their property. It could be seven book of Moses, it could be ring or chain, it could be clothes they gave to you, it could be coffin, a small coffin with two images, images of man and woman gather them, bond them. No matter what they have given to you, have nothing to do with them anymore. Surrender your life to Jesus, make you your Lord, your best son, and savior. As I round up now, please search your life. So as I'm going to pray for you, you make sure that nothing is done. You repent and promise God all this evil, you will do them no more. You see all these people that are into stealing, picking pockets, breaking home of people, one chance, armed robbery. They are terrible things. The people that are into fraud, they do black people, white people, they cheat people. They do government, they, you, know, they, you know, they steal from their parents, from people. My friend, repent to them and say, Lord, I will do it no more. And if you have taken and stolen money, when we are giving offering, we don't need your money. Don't give us offering. Return the money where you have taken it. You are defrauding people. I mean, you are ways. I don't know the evil you are into. All those are into masturbation, fornication, Adultery. You must repent to and say, Lord, I will do it no more. Those are into prostitution and they are selling their body. That's sin. Terrible sin. Those into abortion. Are you like that? Repent. Renounce your old ways. Ask God for me. Are you patronizing the prostitute? Repent. Ask for me, promise God no more. I don't know the wickedness all these people that used to abortion, the heirs abortion, they commit abortion. That's sin. Or maybe you're among those that are into, you know, higher than assassin, ritual killing. Or you are into terrorism. Or you're a murderer of any form. Confess the evil and promise God no more. Ask for the mercy of God. God will show you mercy. As I round up, search your life. Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow, maybe too late. All these people that are fighting and quarreling, are beating their wife, disobedient to their husband, and they are serving their master, and they are not serving their master from the heart, they are stealing the money. Repent and serve so that your settlement will be justified. And those that are serving you, working for you, pay them. That is righteousness. I mean, you are ways. Those that give bribe and take bribe and stop money from people because of your uniform, because of your office, because you are carrying gun. Anybody that comes your way, they must give you money. Money. That is gathering firewood that will burn you from eternity to eternity. Repent and stop the evil. You see all these that into smuggling, people that take snuff and take cigarettes and take Indian hemp, cocaine, heroin. These are terrible. All oh, they are selling it and buying it. Or oh, they are working in the company, repent and say no more. Are you among those people that are into taking alcoholic drinks, 1% and half percent? You are selling it, you are buying it for people. You are taking local G, foreign war. Repent to and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I will do it no more. I don't know the wickedness you are into. 
Now is acceptable time. Tomorrow may be too late. Now. Nobody knows tomorrow. Nobody knows when the Lord will call you. What matters is how prepared are you. So, as a round of such your life. Are you into polygamous marriage? Have you married and divorced? Are you a second wife or third wife? Are you a man that married them three or two? Marriage is between a man and a woman. Until they do your part. You have no right to marry until they separate you. And if I made a mistake and be the second wife or third wife, pack your load and go home. You don't have husband. And if a man that married them three, remove the second and third one before it is too late. And if I send away a first wife, bring her back. And if you run away from a husband, return back the husband as long as the first wife until they do your part. Look at Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. I read from verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and that two shall be one flesh. Well, for there are no more twin but one flesh. What they for God has joined together, let no man put asunder. God ordained the marriage, and it's for better for us until they do your part. So, I mean their way as a round of sexual life. You see all these women that paint their hands, paint their leg, paint their mouth, paint their eyes. All these women that put extra finger, extra nose, attachment, weave on, palming, earrings, jewelry, bango, the make of their body, you don't need that at all at all. Those that dress, they expose their chest, their armpit, their tummy, their waist, they expose their nakedness, that is sin. The young men that do Jericho, rough hair, scatter hair, and they play their hair like a woman, that's sin. The Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 30, when they are spoiled, what shall they do? Do they go after paint, after ornament? They begin to make up. I mean, do you are ways. You see, our sister that came from Botswana was giving us testimony. How they were going to church, they paint mouth and paint hands and paint leg. Along the line, they were, the law was convicting them that that's not the right thing and they began to pray the Lord showed them the Lord showed them and they come and see where they were worshipping before what was full of that and attacking them what was attacking them? snake and he said the snake is like how many? that shows you what people are going to suffer in those places where there is no righteousness the worship snake. Are you among them that hallow such places? Repent before it is too late. So, are you among those that wearing trousers? A woman wearing trousers, abomination. A man wearing skirt and blouse is abomination. And in fact, look at the Bible in Deuteronomy 22, verse 5. I read, The woman shall not wear the which pertaining to a man. Neither shall a man put on woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Those that are dressed like that are what? Abomination. And abominable people can never enter heaven. Let me show you. Praise the Lord. In Revelation 21, verse 8. Revelation 21, I read verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and 
murderers, and homongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burn with fire and brimstone. They shall be cast into hell fire. Those people that dress like that, those people that are sinners, they shall be cast into hell fire. Remember, it is never the will of God that any soul should perish. That's why you need to confess your sins and reject them to let message I come to you. Remember, in Proverbs 28, verse 13, he says, He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whoso that confess them and forsake them shall have mercy. If you will confess your sin today, God will show you mercy and cancel the faith or the judgment. And you will live and fulfill your years. Can I hear you say amen to that? Now, take notes. The Bible said in Exodus chapter 12, verse 15, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. Which means God has made provision for the sins that are passed. And he uses the blood of animal in Old Testament as a symbol of the blood of Jesus, which is to come in the New Testament. Because the blood of animal cannot wash away our sins. So it is the blood of Jesus that washes away our sins. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 29. John chapter 1 verse 29. The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Who is that Lamb? Jesus Christ. No wonder. In John chapter 3 verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth he should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in John chapter 19 verse 30, when Jesus shed the blood, he said, It is finished. The end of sac all sacrifice for sin, it is all over. And in John chapter 14 verse 6, he said, I am the way, not a way, the truth and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So whoever I want to be saved must come to the Father through Jesus Christ. No wonder the Bible said in John chapter 10 verse 10 B, I come that might have life, have it more abundantly. Eternal life shall be your portion. The Lord will give you salvation. Remember my sisters and brothers who are here. The Bible said in the book of John chapter 8 verse 30 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. No wonder. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11 28, say, Come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you your rest. If you will come to the Father through Jesus today, salvation shall be your portion. Transformation shall be your portion. Total freedom shall be your portion. Jesus said, Come. Will you come? Jesus said what? Come, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you your rest. If you look at John chapter 1 verse 12, and I read, as I begin to conclude now, chapter 1 verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them gave him power, to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received who? What power did they receive? That power shall come upon you. From today, there shall be total transformation. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. If any man be in who? Is a new creature. Today, as you give your life to Jesus, the Lord will transform you. You shall become a new Christian. The grace for righteousness will come upon you. And you shall live and fulfill your years and make heaven at last in Jesus' name. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Are you ready to do so now? Rise up on your feet. Rise up, search your life and pray. Search your life and amend your ways. 
Everybody pray, everybody pray. I am sorry, O Lord, show me mercy. That should be your prayer. Confess your sins, repent of them, ask for mercy. On behalf of yourself, ask for mercy. Mercy, O God. Mercy, O God. Mercy, O God. I confess all wickedness, all unrighteousness, all ungodliness. Show me mercy. Show me mercy, O God. I'm sorry for my bad life, my previous life. Show me mercy, mercy. I'm sorry for all the evil I have done. I will do it no more. Show me mercy. Forgive me, save me. Save me, O God. Everybody pray. Everybody pray. Our Father, have mercy upon your people, forgive your people, and give us the grace to live righteous life, to glory that we know you. Oh Lord, I pray, help us. Everybody pray. No more evil, no more wickedness, no more sin, no more adultery, fornication, no more abortion and stealing and robbery, no more fornication, no more any occultic spirit and the native power, doctor power, no more. I reject them, I renounce it, show me mercy. Everybody pray. Call upon the Lord with all your heart. Everybody pray. I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Father, I am sorry, Lord. Oh, Lord, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh, Lord. I am sorry, Lord. Sorry, Lord. Father. Oh, Lord. And one more time. Sorry, Lord. Jehovah. Oh, Lord. Eyes closed and head bowed. Just raise your hand up if you are truly sorry. I'll pray for you. The Lord will save you, transform you. Eyes closed and head bowed. I want to pray for that person who has been smoking and drinking. Promise God no more. I also want to pray for you that you've been into abortion. Promise God no more. I want to pray for you that have been into robbery, stealing. Ask for the mercy of God, the Lord will forgive you. To a person that belongs to a secret court, reject it, renounce it, and ask for the mercy of God. The Lord will show you mercy. The one that has a lot of charm given to you, and you, by native doctors, you put it in your place of work and in the house, repent and go and take those charm, burn them completely. A woman that have unforgiving heart, always angry, ask God to forgive you. The one that is into masturbation, ask God to forgive you. The person that is a prostitute, ask God to show you mercy. Keep your hands up, I want to pray for you. Say this word after me. Almighty God, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I confess that I am a sinner. 
I am very sorry for all my sins. Lord, I promise you, I will never continue in them anymore. From today, I confess and I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. He shed his precious blood for me. And he was buried. And on the top day, he rose against my justification. Almighty God, use the blood of Jesus Christ. Wash my sins away from my heart. I plead the blood of Jesus. From today, I reject the devil. I renounce all his evil. Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my personal Savior. Cancel my name in the book of death. Write my name in the book of life. Give me power to sin no more. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your two hands up and pray for you. A Father in heaven, I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I present my people before you. Whatsoever they have done, known and unknown to them, if you are wrought, remember mercy. Every yoke of power that makes them to do evil, by your authority, I break that yoke. Let the power of sin be broken in Jesus' name. Father, mercy. Rejoices over judgment. Whatever judgment that has been determined upon them and that suffering the effect and are ready to die. Father, by your mercy, I cancel that effect. I cancel that death in Jesus' name. My daddy. As this one surrender totally now, let something new begin in their life. Can you sing this song a little before I conclude? I surrender. I surrender. Jesus, blessed Savior, I surrender, I surrender again. the basis of this confession. Father, everything that has to do with the devil, I cancel it in their life. And from this moment, by the blood of Jesus, every sentence be nullified. And I claim their spirit, their soul, their body for Jesus that they cancel their name in the book of death. Write their name in the book of life. Give them power to sin no more in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? And it is amen 